Here's a video from the teaser trailer I put up in March for a curatage of really one of the most tough and hard and hyperkeratotic verrucas I've seen for a wee while. Delightful lady, real sense of humour, and she's presented with this really hyperkeratotic lesion. Been listed on my clinic by my colleague, and we'd had a, a three step plan. Plan one was to do an aggressive debridement to see if we could stimulate some healing. Plan two is curatage, and ultimately that's what we've needed to do, so that's what the thrust of the video will be about. And plan three is to do a, a lobed rotation flap. There's quite a history of nicotine use in the past and we think that's why it's contributed to the skin being so bad. And therefore what we wanted to do is as least trauma to the skin as possible to try and improve this very painful excuse me, hyperkeratotic verruca without creating a painful problematic scar that's worse than where she is now. So what we did and she was really resistant to local anaesthetic and she's got this with all her other treatments with at the dentist and epidural so we'd had some difficulty achieving anaesthesia on the day and what I'm going to put up next is just a little um, screenshot of the aggressive debridement now in truth because we'd had such a problem getting a numb I'd probably wanted to do a very aggressive uh, debridement and then needling but just because it had been a slightly suboptimal painful experience getting the numb with having to do three four local infiltrations I perhaps didn't get round to that and I'd hoped to really improve the lesion with the debridement um, covered it with silver nitrate at the end again to try and do a little bit of uh, further topical chemotherapy as well as to stop the bleeding and then she came back after a few days because she was quite sore and that's the still that I'll put in um, about now. I'd planned for a six week review at which point I'd hoped to see some improvement but I did warn her that if we were a little improved at week six then we would proceed to curatage with the potential of creating a more painful scar and of course a potential for recurrence and that's what we pre proceeded to do. So we'll start up with a wee chit chat. So here we are for round two. So Sarah had this aggressively debrided from the first part of the video. And as you can see, that's not really done an awful lot. So Sarah came limping in this morning. She's still really sore. And what we want to do now is, is the plan B. So remember, plan A was the aggressive debridement. Plan B is curatage and plan C is a skin flap. But being as Sarah's skin's not fantastic, we, we want to do as little as we can to her so as to not cause her to be worse by giving her some cheeky scar and fibrosis. So if you look round the side, we have just a little knee pore dressing on the side. So if you remember from last time, Sarah was really slow to go off and numb. And so you like this with everywhere you go on, your epidurals, dentists. So, so we really took your word for it last time and we gave you a block about an hour ago and you've, had, you've been in the cheap seats drinking our NHS coffee. And let's just see if that's kind of gone numb. So to test for numbness, what we use, you can get these from the NHS supply chains. They look a little bit like a forearm. Jeepers crumbs, you're still not that no, numb. I can still feel you. Oh, you cheeky bugger. So so we're numb on the heel. So what I'm feeling for there, guys, is vasodilation. So you're numb on the heel, okay? Now you're better in the forefoot. Is that still sore? Yes, that is still sore. Oh, you cheeky. So you have had a shed load of anaesthetic in there and an hour. I mean, that would floor a small elephant. I'm not saying you're like a small elephant, <laughs> although the skin's not too different, to be fair. Right, so we're going to need to put a little bit of extra blocking for Sarah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of extra blocking from the top. Do you, do you know, it's really interesting, and I like to put these videos up to show them they don't go really well, because it's all very well going on YouTube and going, look how brilliant I am, but actually it's, it's more useful, I think, for my readers to see when things don't go exactly absolutely to plan. So we did a big old block. We put in eight mils of Narapin as a tibial block, Nice and numb at the heel, so Sarah's no, no feeling there, and and neither really. Let's go back on our NHS forearm again. No, so so neither the medial or the lateral plantar nerve has gone off. So what I'm going to do is we're coming through the top. It shouldn't be too bad because we'll have some loss of feeling, and we're just going to raise a bleb of anaesthesia on this area here, and then we're going to cut this out. Just going to stop the video now so because let's get you back in. Let's get you back in shot then, Sarah. Right. Oh, crying well, the crying and the swearing is fine because I'm married, so I know what it's like for women to cry and swear. I'm often the cause of it, to be fair. 
So, uh, but I'm glad I turned the camera off there, viewers, because it wasn't the most pleasant experience for Sarah, if we're honest. So you can see there's just a little little bleb of where we've put in a, a bit of a field block. So, so the first thing I'm going to do, Sarah, is just give that overlying callus a little bit of a shave. Really, it just makes the, the, the next part easier. Plus, it's me testing that you're still nice and numb. Um, and it just gets some of this. I mean, it's the... It's the the, think of a word, hardness, I'm trying to think of a better word than that, of the hard skin, um, solididness, cementness, if we have a tissue. So we've just got a few tears in the background there. We don't like to make a grown woman cry. Thank you very much, thank you. Mm -hmm. No, that's fine, thank you. So, as I say, we leave in the real videos of what what it's like to manage these cases because this is this is kind of like real real scenarios. So there she blows. So you can actually it's quite a size of a lesion there now. So I'm just going to test this now again. So Sarah, anything cheeky at the top? If I press there hard, no, it's fine. At the side, it's fine. At the bottom end? No, it's fine. And you're okay there? Yeah. Okay, cool. Right, so Dad, can you just get me the, the, the iodine there? Aye. Okay, I just want a little smidge of iodine just on that. So we, we already prepped guys with some chloro prep before we started doing the injections in the skin stuff. Chloro prep's obviously a bit see through and a bit clear, so you can't really see it. But now I've just re done the skin. That's more of a tickle or a pain? A bit of a pain. Okay. Um, let me just re be really sure because in a minute we're going to change the angle of the blade. You're okay there? Yeah. Okay. Because I don't really want you to have a suboptimal experience, Sarah, because yeah. you're, you're far too lovely. So it's, I'm doing like a little soaring motion and going all the way through. And you can see why I took up away that skin first. So there's different schools of thoughts. Some of our American colleagues tend to not go all the way through the dermoepidermal junction because you worry about scarring. But I just think with the average lesion, is my hand in the way? Sorry, guys. My hand's in the way. I don't think for, for, for a lesion like this, it's going to make an awful lot of difference. And the idea with the keeping the basement membrane the dermal junction in place makes sense but i'm just not convinced that they do as good a job of getting rid of all the verruca tissue so there's there's our thing a little touch of claret there and then I'm just gonna have a little look at that I always like to check that there's nothing in there doing anything it shouldn't no that's all fine so that's it done Little touch of clout you can see. Just going to put. You know what, so is that tickling yeah, or painful? That was tender. All right, amazing, isn't it? So we're going to put a dress on this. Um, I'm just going to put my hands in the way. So I'll, I'll do a final shot with a photo. Here's a close up of the lesion. You can see it's somewhat like an iceberg. The hyperkeratotic epidermis at the top and that iceberg of fibrous tissue below. We'll typically send these off for histo. I think it's really good practice. Even though we know this Baruka is hyperkeratotic and has been present for years, it's really good practice to see that in black and white. So sent it off to the lab and that will come back in a few days' time. And then we put Sarah in a big, thick, cheeky dressing in case of strike through. And we've obviously talked about painkillers. I normally see such cases back after one week and three weeks, but because I thought this might bleed a bit, I saw Sarah back after two days. You can see there was a little bit of strike through on the dressing. And then this is what it looked like after two days. So it had been moderately sore, but not too bad. Only a little touch of strike through bleeding. So we've irrigated the wound and we've dressed her up. So we'll see again at um, three weeks. Typically takes really one week to, to really mostly epithelialize over, but three weeks to really fully heal. So my standard one week and three weeks, and then typically I'll do a 12 week review. And you've got a really good idea at that stage whether A, the lesion's gone, 
it being a Veruca, there's a, around about a 10% chance of recurrence, I think. Done a bit of a literature review on this, and there's actually very little written up of a good standard for these, and uh, maybe something I'm going to try and do for this year. In fact, I've got the first draft of a paper. A uh, buddy of mine and I were going to write it last year. Tony, you know who you are. He was supposed to do the first draft of the paper. Um, we were going to look at uh, curatage, excoliation, and a few other bits and bobs, as well as long-term reviews. And I say about a 10% chance of a cheeky, crappy scar. So I'll, I'll post some post-op pics in a couple of months. Cheers, guys.